Annabelle Anderson, and I'm the world number one stand-up paddler. And if someone had ever told me that I would have had a career racing stand-up paddle boards, I would have laughed them out the door. My passion for adventure comes from how I grew up. I've always been outdoors and I've always done what I found on my doorstep. I grew up on a farm, our nearest neighbours lived 40 minutes away on a metal road. I was surrounded by everything that's on a farm. I had my ponies, I had my animals. That was how I grew up. I just learned to play with whatever was around me. At the age of 19, in my second year of college, I found a lump in my right breast and subsequently had a lumpectomy and it showed abnormal cells. When you're 19 and think that you are six foot tall and bulletproof, having something like that takes you down a notch very, very quickly. Um, and I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna lie, it scared the living daylights out of me. Stand Up For The Cure was founded by an incredible lady by the name of Judy Vivian. When Judy founded Stand Up For The Cure, she was aware that I'd been through this. And as a figurehead in the sport, as an athlete, as a, you know, to the outside, a picture of health, I um, knew that I would have a very important message to the younger generation to go, hey, look after yourself, have awareness, get checks. Unfortunately, cancer, it, it doesn't choose who it attacks. Prevention is always better than cure. As for a love for competition, I would call it a love-hate relationship, but I was born with the will to win. My first taste of competition came at a pretty young age and it was riding ponies at Pony Club at around the age of four or five. Throughout my mid and late teens, everything that I did was focused on becoming the best ski racer that I could possibly be. And when an accident catastrophically took that away, and it took me two years to be able to walk and learn how to run properly again. Rehabilitation was a massive part of that. Rehabilitation led me to jumping on a bike, but given that I had such an athletic background and I loved to train and I loved to do, I accidentally fell into triathlon and went down the same rabbit hole all over again. So between the ages of 16 to 24, I was as close to a crash your stomach as you could possibly get. And by the time I finished college, you know, I was a, I was a pretty much a broken mess. After college, and you know, having done the best that I could to destroy my body in the process, I, you know, went into the big wide world and you know, essentially drove a desk and worked for some very big companies and corporations, both in New Zealand and overseas. Um, but I still did what I knew made me function. I, I still rode my bike, I still ran, I still loved to ski, I still did everything I loved to do. I just didn't compete. But I did sail. And sailing was the one thing that led me to stand up paddling. So it took an offshore race from Auckland in New Zealand to Fiji, the Auckland Fiji Yacht Race, back in 2009. And we were at Musket Cove you know, for a couple of days after the race and I needed to get out to a boat anchored in the bay. On the dock was a board and it was either take the board and a paddle or wait half an hour for a long boat to go and see my mates. I took the board and I figured it out. And that's where it all started. I stumbled upon a new way to play on the water. I've achieved more than probably anyone will ever achieve in this sport. I've won the biggest races in the world on repeat. I've beaten men on repeat. My best performances, I don't think I've realized them yet.
A lot of my success I would likely attribute to having made a significant number of mistakes for a very long time in a number of other sports and learning from them. When I'm not training or racing, the irony is, is I'm probably doing much the same thing and that is why I'm still doing what I do as I get older because I love the doing. I love sport. It will be such an integral part of my entire life for as long as I'm alive. I will just never ever stop doing and that's why I try and incorporate so many of the things that I love to do and as I get older the more that I bring in all the things that I haven't been able to do in the last few years and that's what keeps it fresh. So if you want to find me I'm probably going to be out somewhere doing. Go and look there. <laughs> I get asked who my hero or heroes are quite frequently and I'm really honest I I don't have one. I don't have heroes. I I just do. <laughs> it's it's not arrogance, it's not anything other than my mission is to be the best that I can be, not to measure myself against the greatness of others. Nutrition is something that's so key to the individual and the more that you understand your body, the more that you understand what fuel works for you and what doesn't, is just something that you have to hone through trial and error over time. I eat pretty much everything. I'm not fussy. I keep it pretty simple. And oftentimes because I'm traveling so much, it's a case of what can I get where I am, but not letting that, you know, upset the apple cart, you know, for performance. No, I'm not vegan, I'm not paleo, I'm not vegetarian, I'm not pescatarian, I'm not thing, I'm normal, I eat food. I highly recommend that you do too. <laughs> so let's be straight. When you travel around the world to compete at a number of events, being fussy about what you eat Mean, would mean that you either have to take it with you or you can roll with the program, develop iron guts, roll with the punches and use what you can access locally. Sometimes that might be a bit of Russian roulette but if that's the case take it with you. <laughs> I've travelled the world and you know where the best place in the world is? Home. For anyone who's travelled to the South Island of New Zealand, to the Southern Alps, you'll understand exactly what I mean about the majesty of the lakes and the mountains, the contrasts, the clarity of the water, the climate, the stillness, and why it really is the best little country in the world. Probably two things that I'm scared or afraid of. They are snakes and spiders. <laughs> if I was stuck on a deserted island, the three things that I would want are a board, and I'll consider a board and a paddle to be one thing, a knife to be able to forage, to kill, to sustain, to make things, and I'd want a volleyball. Those are my three things. So there you have it. That's me, Annabelle Anderson. Thanks for watching.